And they're still watching, right? Yeah. <clears throat> eating good, round up, we eating good on the food stamp card. Hanging out with my boy Birch. <clears throat> brother Birch. What's up, my brother? My friend. <clears throat> Roundup, I got you on here. This is the third time I'm going live today. I just feel like, I, for Chris too, I feel like it's so many teaching moments being an entrepreneur. What do you think, Chris? We learn every day. Every day. It's something. Every day. We, I consider, together, we got, what, 40 years of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ventures, perhaps? Probably more. Probably more. I mean, for me, <clears throat> I would say high school is where it really started. You know, I was I was thinking about being the world's greatest DJ and promoting stuff. Yep. 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 But they don't make too much money. No, and I've said I've shared with you before. I mean, it's like you're DJ and you're seeing 800 people in this party and the promoters at the door just counting and counting and counting and counting. They can't even count it all. <clears throat> yeah, I know. You can't even count it all. Roundup, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. It's late night. I feel like we're like the, the, the network as opposed to watching that time management machine. You can jump on here and learn of what real entrepreneurs are doing. My mission roundup, I'm Chris Haskins with therealestateroundup.com. My mission in the industry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Doing that, I get to hang out with winners like Chris Birch. We got a very quick one for you tonight as Chris talks about land trust versus grantor revo revocable trust. Chris, first of all, rewind. How do we even get here today? So, uh, uh, what was it? December December twentieth. So, a month ago in a few days, <clears throat> we actually purchased a property in Baltimore, in the city of Baltimore. I unfortunately made the mistake of buying the the property sight unseen. I knew, I knew the, well, yeah. For that. So, I knew the basic area, but I'll refresh and say. It was only fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, you can do it. right. So it wasn't a whole bunch of money. We we closed on the property December twentieth, and the twenty first, I I drove up, and I was driving the neighborhood, and was like, "Good grief! Why in the world would you do this?" So After you bought it. Yep. So I, I quickly. Uh, did my own marketing. I did some email campaigns. I talked to a couple wholesalers in the market, showed them what I had, and they kind of, you know, went out there and, and, and searched and sent it out. And we ended up getting an offer on it. And so that was December 20th. We, we closed on it by January 2nd or 3rd. We actually had a, a ratified contract. So here we are you know, two weeks or two and a half weeks later, and we're going to go to settlement tomorrow. And I get an email from the title <coughs> company yesterday asking, could they have a copy of the land trust? Because that's how we bought this property in Baltimore. We bought it in the name of a land trust. Now, so, keep in mind, we, did, we didn't use, so on the, on the purchase of the property, we did not, we use one title company on the sale of the property. We use a different uh, title company for one specific reason is that I mentioned on your channel, the title company that I bought this property with gave me a long lecture. They had me come in, you know, 30 minutes before to explain why Maryland doesn't accept the land trust. And we had, you know, kind of a back and forth. It was, it was peaceful, but, the, the back and forth was Maryland not only does not agree, but they also do not agree. So they, they haven't actually decided whether a land trust is a valid way to hold title to a property. They haven't agreed or disagreed to the fact, you know, that you can hold title to a piece of real estate in a trust. Wow. 
So we had this whole discussion, and you know, I, I explained to your to your viewers before that was it was there something wrong with it? Was it illegal? And the attorney that we closed with on the purchase said, "No, there's nothing illegal, but we just want you to make sure that you understand how to operate in a land trust. Do you understand okay. that Maryland doesn't recognize it as a way to hold title?" Mm -hmm. So we have this contract now as of December 20th, and I can't get in contact with the title company. That, that originally closed it. Right. They closed the deal on our purchase. Mm -hmm. So initially I, I sent an email and the attorney responded, oh, great. You know, this was in between Christmas and New Year's. And he responded immediately. Great. We can close next week. No problem. We already have the documents on file. And two or three weeks now have gone past, and he's now not responding to me. Mm. And I'm finding out now that I've now acquired a new title attorney, a new title company, that the original deed was never reported in the trust name. So mm -hmm. technically, as of last week, we actually didn't actually, on paper, we didn't actually own this property that we were now under contract to sell because the original title attorney never recorded the actual deed. Why didn't they record the deed, Chris? If, so if you talked to me last week, I would have had a different story. But this week is the city of Baltimore. A lot of local municipalities are very slow. Oh, okay, just time. It's, you say it hasn't been recorded yet. As you filed yeah. it, but it hasn't been recorded. So it actually, as of today, it was actually finally recorded yesterday. A month and, and a week later. Yep. That's yep. typical. Man, I, I haven't even been able to get building permits sometimes, Chris, because it is, uh, they can't find the deed. Yeah. So as of today, we're ready to close tomorrow, and I get a call this afternoon from our new title company asking for a copy of the land trust that we own this property in. And I sent that in this morning, and the response that I got was, "Yeah, but we actually we have a we have a question with the land trust because the land trust is really meant for actual land or actual property." Mm -hmm. So I've heard you say it. I've heard Ron Legrand say it. I've heard many many people on your channel say it. Bill. Is that it's the same thing as a grantor revocable trust. So I'm gonna show, I'm, I have actually have the document. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen with you. Yeah, go ahead, and man. I wanna show you what I did. And, I, and I, I've, know, I've known you to tell this to your family, your Roundup family about how simple this is. So can you see that? Uh, yep, gotcha. Well, you prepared, you prepared. I am prepared. So I was actually showing this to a, to a friend of mine today at the shop, and I didn't want to. I, I wanted him to understand that I'm the actual beneficiary of it, or my LLC is the beneficiary. Yeah. But I didn't want to show him who holds title, and I want to show him show him actually who um, was <clears throat> was my trustee. So this document, I'm sure, looks really really familiar to you. So this, same document, the crazy, same crazy. document that I purchased from you, right? You're crazy, crazy. All right. Hold on. Let me introduce Brown Dappers, my real estate family. If you're just joining us, I'm hanging out with Chris Birch, real estate and well, you're an entrepreneur. We're yeah. just going over very quickly so I, I get you, so I can get you out of here. We're 10 minutes in. He went to go. He bought it in a land trust, but he wants to sell it and he's having a problem with the name of the actual document. So that's where we are. The title company doesn't necessarily like land trust in Maryland. And I guess he's saying they're not legal, but they're not illegal. Is that where you're at, Chris? Right. So so Maryland, Maryland, the the judiciary of Maryland has never actually said that they agree or disagree with a land trust. So there, there's there, there's there's two ways to look at it is that they haven't deemed it a way to hold title, but they also haven't deemed it a way not to hold title. So 
when I was saying that the when we bought this property in the name of a trust, the title company wanted me to they wanted to make sure I understood how we were we were purchasing this property, but they still cleared title. You gotcha. know, so gotcha. they I think it was more educational, and I, I respect this, this this attorney for actually bringing me in because what he shared with me, I think, I think is very true, is that holding title in the name of a trust does not provide you any real legal protection. It provides you the anonymity, but if you go to court, a good attorney or a good judge is going to pick the trust apart. They're going to kill you. And you better have that thing in an LLC. I think that's what they I think that's what they think, Chris, that we're doing it like we're where they think we're creating this asset protection barrier. Is that where you're at? I don't want myself or anything that I have interest in, whether it's my LLC or whatever it is. I just don't want that on public record. That, that is it. That's all it is. Period. Period. Yeah. OK, so you're going to sell this house that is in your trust. Title yep. company says we don't like this land trust document. Go. Yep. So as you see here, this agreement, this trust was created. As I said, we closed on Jan or on the yeah on the twentieth, and this was created on the thirteenth. And the one thing that I actually added to this agreement. Let me go to it. I thought you bought it in December. We did, and I actually says January, so that's not. Oh, right. we got to change. Okay, okay, got that's it. not right. So, if you see my highlighted box, the only thing that I added to it was that. Where? Right under trust agreement. Oh, I see. That is the word grantor, revocable trust. Crazy. And when I did that, I sent it back to the same title attorney. And they said, no problem. That's great. <laughs> so we're going to close tomorrow. That is just too much, Chris. What is your thoughts on how do you think it had to be like this? What does it, in your mind, because obviously they don't, they probably don't even know the whole statute on this thing. No doubt. I, I think to some extent they do. Okay. They know that. All right. Yeah, I think to some extent they do, because when I mentioned when she asked me, how do you want to hold title? You know, in what name do you want to hold title when you bought it or when you're selling it? No, when I'm selling it, this was our conversation uh, yesterday. And she said, do you want it to be in X, Y, Z trust? And I said, yes. And she said, I'm not asking you to criticize, but I'm curious why. And I said, only because we do not want to go on public record in any entity name or any personal name. And she said, I completely, completely understand. So I think it's, was it. I think it's way, it's way more common, but I think some attorneys are a little bit speculative because people maybe don't understand how simple it is mm -hmm. and don't understand that it's not providing asset protection. It's simply holding you anonymous to who holds actual title to that property. Mm -hmm. yep. Nice. So, okay. So it sounds like they did know. And when you told them you wanted it, you wanted it for an anonymity, mm -hmm. um, was it, any, was it any more conversation or was that it? No, they actually asked me what time do I want to close tomorrow? Wow. That is so cool, Chris. Roundup, I just want to bring it to you because I get so many people whining and complaining to me that trusts aren't legal. I know Chris is already saying they're only legal in six states. That's okay. because it doesn't say they're legal. It doesn't say that they're not legal, too. So this is proof that Chris is going through this. Did you get nervous when they called up, Chris? No, not at all. Not at all. This is actually, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, I was in real estate for the last three years and We've done a couple flips and I'm now on the mindset of how can I do it without actually having to go to the property, which without actually having to manage a project, what is, what is a different way that I can be in the real estate industry, kind of what I call a, a side hustle and still see a, a decent rate of return 
and do it a non-traditional way. I mean, could you imagine if I was trying to get a loan and a and a and an appraisal and an inspection and it, it no. It's it's too much. It is too much. I had I had to do a renewal. You know when you do commercial loans, you have to renew them. Yep. I had to do one this week, man. It's just painful. I had to turn on my leases, turn in, I had to turn in my tax, which I hate, turn in tax returns, financial statements. Yeah. Rent rolls is crazy, man. Yep. I know. Well, that is cool, Chris. I'm so excited that this worked out, and I want my roundupers to know just because your state does not necessarily recognize them doesn't mean you can't hold title in one. Yep. You're living proof. Living yep. proof, Chris. No, I mean, I bought a flip last year. We flipped it and I put it in my LLC's name. Everything went smooth. But in the last two months, we've acquired three new projects, none of which are in my name or my LLC's name. And Good. all three of them cleared title. No problem. We had, wow. we had a minor minor adjustment to one. But although the, the state of Maryland doesn't actually honor uh, a land trust as a way to hold title, we hold title on three different properties in three different trust name and we're selling actually we're selling one of them tomorrow mm -hmm. so. I, think, I think they're thinking that you're gonna like be going to court for i don't know chris i don't trying to figure out what they could be thinking because it's not like you're doing it to protect anything i mean you're just operating under the radar in, in my opinion i just yeah i mean my honest opinion on that is that I don't want someone to know what I'm doing at a specific address. That's and there, there's no legal reason why I need to disclose mm -mm. who I am or who my entity is to do that project. I mean, there there's go. no reason. Yeah. That's exactly why we do it, brother. Exactly yeah. why we do it. And Chris, let me ask you, using a trust, one to 10, how difficult do you think it is once you understand the moving parts, the concepts, and that's almost like, I guess one could say the philosophy of using it. How difficult do you, how difficult? On, on one to 10, one being simple, 10 being difficult. Yeah. A after one. You get through a, a what? After, after you understand it and wrap your mind around the fact that you can actually hold something and control something that's not actually in your name or in your, your company's name. Mm -hmm. The land trust takes about five minutes for you to fill out. You find someone that you trust to be your trustee. They sign that document. You take it to, I don't know, a bank or whoever to get it notarized. It's official. Yeah, it's free. It's free yeah. at the bank. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my bank, it's free. Me too. Right. It's, I mean, they charge, I don't know, 50 bucks for a wire transfer, but the notary yeah. part is free, right? But, I mean... It, it's, I mean, it's so simple. It's so, I mean, I heard you mention today you're doing a land trust class next week. No, you know what? I have been, people have been emailing me to do, I'm going to go and do a subject two master class. So, so I'm going to fill out the contract. That That is one strategy that I have not done and I want to know more about. I understand it, but I, I want to know more about it. Nice. Yeah. You're going to be a beast. Yeah, round up if you don't have my subject too, just go to chrisaskins.com and you can get my subject to docs. Cool. Yeah, next week I'm gonna do a whole class on it, man. I'm just so pathetically simple, man. I mean, I literally did one today as we go and sign in the papers. It's... Anyway, so what is the hardest part? And then I'm gonna let you go, Chris. We're at 20 minutes. The hardest part of A to Z from getting your house in the land trust, what is the hardest part for you that it took you? Because it's so, I don't. It took me three years to grasp it. Mm -hmm. but it took you how long from six, learning it to probably it? Six, six to nine months, maybe. Okay, so still not a short. But that's that, that's relatively yeah. long. But I think the hardest part was understanding that it's so simple. Overcomplicated. You oh, you overthink it. I mean, I don't want to discredit anybody, but it's almost to the point for me understanding that why in the world would I have to hire a real estate agent to go write an offer on a piece of property that I want to buy and the seller wants to sell to me? Like, uh, I don't I don't need a guy for that. I know I want it. I know they want to sell it. Let's do 
a simple purchase and sale agreement and we're mm -hmm. done. We hand that to a title company. That's something. But to me, I've always, I don't want to say taught, but I've always heard and maybe translated to myself that, well, if you want to buy real estate, you hire a real estate agent. Mm, traditional. Mm -hmm. Traditional. And there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But as an investor, it's like, yeah, but that's that's another layer that I don't really need to deal with. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. I mean, it, it took, no, it took, it took me quite a while to understand it. I bought the house that I live in, I bought with a real estate agent and the seller paid commission to both my agent and the seller's agent. And we did everything traditional. And that's what kind of sparked the bug with me is like, wait a minute. You know, I didn't really have to do it like that. Mm -mm. So, you know, nice. So it took you nine months. I think nine months is fast. It took Ron Legrand as he goes. He goes. It took me seven times to hear this before he did. Right. <laughs> yeah. Took me three years round up. Now you're looking at the gentleman. I yeah. really think, dude. I really think, Chris. The internet just speeds up stuff. It speeds up our learning process. No, you, I'm no. What's cool is. Even though it took you three years, in two days, I could rewind on the Roundup Family YouTube channel, on uh -huh. Chris Haskins' channel, yeah. and I, I learned everything 45 minutes at a time. Like, it was, <laughs> like, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I just love it. The fact that it's funny you mentioned that because my whole mission like, is to be able to cram in all this stuff that I learned right into my channel. That way you can get it and move. It's almost like jumping on a light beam of light. Yep. Yep. So it's working. What you're yep. saying is that it's working. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. That is so cool. I'm so happy for you, man. Buying properties and without your name, without putting your company name on record. How? What other way is there to be? I mean, I own it, I control it, and, and nobody know, knows that I own it. I love it. Yeah. All right, round up. You're hearing it from the man, another one of the rich white guys. Oh, he said, other, we... I'm, the, I'm the only rich white guy that I know. <laughs> you too much, man. Yeah. We are working, Chris and I are working diligently on bringing you the millionaire playbook. We are, we've been up. Anyway, grind and bringing this to you, Frowned Up Family. And we're going to have some pre-sold. Chris, can we get some pre-orders? Can we get it ready for them to pre-order it? Yeah. No, I, think, no I think I think, um, I think think the pre-orders probably could roll out probably next week. Nice. We have a good picture. All we need is the design and the, maybe the, the, yeah. the categories. Yeah. Round Up, where else are you? I promise you. But, um, every millionaire Every, without exception. I remember hanging out with Ron Grant a few years ago. He left his book somewhere. The guy brings out a pen. Chris, this mm. go. he's doing this. Yep. Writing on his hand. <laughs> yep. I, I'm, I'm, I see him do it. He's like. Yep. Right. So I'm like, I, I know this exists. You know, I just don't. I guess it, it takes time. It took time for me to meet you to kind of come up with the, the concept. Sure. And just with your background and being an entrepreneur, you're going to bring a whole new dynamic to it, not being in the real estate business for the last 15 years. And I think that's, that's just, for me, it's just priceless. Yeah. No, I mean, I would love more than anything to really share kind of my experience and, and what I've done in, in the marketing and the print. And then just recently, um, we launched a YouTube channel. So I'm on YouTube. We're doing more cross promotions on Facebook. So we're doing the social media. And to me, the benefit is actually the receptiveness of what, you, what you've already seen, but I'm actually coming to life to receive is people are saying, wow, I saw you doing this and I saw you doing that and I saw you doing this. Can you show me? Yeah. And my first response is like, like, I'd love to show you because it's like something I've been searching for. Mm -hmm. I'm, maybe I understood it, but I didn't do it. But now I'm putting it into action and people are saying, whoa, you're actually doing it. Well, show me how you're doing it. Wow. I, I, I think the, the reception is great. Yeah. You got such a, to me, you got such a niche. You're, you know, the vessel that you bring, uh, you know, your, your ambiance and your spirit. And you're kind of, I feel like you got an urban, an urban uh, sensibility too. 
you know, where you touch a different audience. That, that actually, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. You know, that'd be cool. Round up the millionaire playbook. It's going to look something like this. Mm -hmm. Chris, I promise we are working diligently, diligent, vigilantly on this. The whole, the whole reason we went live tonight is because we were working on this playbook. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yep. So we were doing that, and then this thing came out about this trust. If you're going to be able to be, be able to put this playbook in your back pocket, you have to have. I don't care if it's, you don't have to get hours, but you need a book, and this is going to be a durable one. It will last you. It's going to be quality, and it ain't going to be cheap. You know, it ain't going to be one of the things that you're going to buy at Walmart. But I promise you, Chris and I are putting in almost 40 years, maybe more, of just entrepreneur. And for me, real estate investing since 2004. So the Millionaire Playbook, it will be something for you to put your ideas. It's going to ask you the right questions. The good thing about it is it's specifically for you. It's for you. All right. All right, Chris. Anything else? Sure. No, my, my battery was about to go dead on the laptop, so I wanted to grab a cord and plug it in. Oh, you know, okay, that's cool. <clears throat> Round up, subscribe, make sure you join us. Chris, yep. you're not coming down here for over the weekend, are you? No, unfortunately, well, fortunate for me, but unfortunately, February 1st is my nephew's oh, birthday. Oh, that's right, that's right. So we are actually going duck pin bowling on Saturday. <laughs> Mm, that sounds like fun. It, it does. I, I, I'm actually, I'm happy to do it. I love my nephew, but I would love to come down just for the networking. And I mean, it's only three hours from DC. Yeah. You know, come down for the day and hang out. But yeah, no, I think uh, whoever's coming, I know you have a bunch of people that are actually already signed up. I think yeah. it's going to be, a great, I think it's going to be a great event. I think we had 25 just for my link and I don't know how many he's got on his. But the man, honor to meet the man flying in on a private plane. I mean, how often do you get to hang out with somebody that owns this plane? Well, do you have a plane, Chris? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right. Round up. Enjoy your night. Sweet dreams. I will see you Saturday. And Saturday morning, I'm going to do my breakfast. Breakfast, I'm going to be doing it at 6 a.m. I'll be at, at uh, Golden Corral at actually 6.15 if you want to come have breakfast with me before we go over to the uh, event with Ron. I usually do it at 7.30, but I like to hang out with you at the dirtiest, filthiest, <laughs> nastiest buffet in the Hampton Roads area. You have to use hand sanitizer when you leave. But but the best part about the buffet is the what bar? The omelet bar is the only thing I get. I can't touch it. Yep. <laughs> do you, go, you don't go, do you, Chris? I, I think I'm going to, well... I don't want to go, but I'll, I'll go experience it one time. The omelet bar is all I get because they make them fresh. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Round up. I talk to you. I love you. Peace.